Hello and welcome to Grizzly's video, how to replace the arbor bearings on a G1023 SL series table saw. My name is Kent and this is one in a series of how-to videos that we are producing, making it easier for our customers to upgrade and maintain their Grizzly equipment. This is Sean, an engineer here at Grizzly. Hi. Together we'll show you step-by-step -step how to replace the arbor bearings in your G1023 SL series table saw. This video is designed to give you an overview of the installation and to help you visualize the process. It should be used in conjunction with the written instructions that came with your table saw. We recommend you watch this entire video and read these instructions thoroughly before beginning this job. You can also call our technical support at 570-546-9663 if you need further assistance. But most importantly, remember to follow all shop safety procedures and remember, there are no more important safety devices than these. The first step is to disconnect the machine from power. Next, remove the saw blade, fence, and switch. You'll need to remove the table to gain access to the geared bearing housing. Be careful to check for any shims under the table corners. If you find any, make a note about where each one goes so you can put them back in the same order later. Now remove the V-belts one at a time. Remove the blade shroud, then raise the motor all the way up. The geared bearing housing can now be removed by loosening the cap screw that holds it in place and sliding the entire unit off the shaft while an assistant supports the weight of the motor. Now you're ready to begin disassembling the geared bearing housing. To get started, remove the set screws in the pulley. There may be two sets of screws in each hole. If that's the case, remove both. Now remove the bearing cap, followed by the arbor lock nut, which has left-handed threads. Next, position the housing so that it is well supported. Then, gently tap the threaded end of the arbor with a dead blow hammer to drive the arbor out of the outer bearing. Slide the arbor completely out of the housing to remove the pulley, spacers, and key from the arbor. At this point, one bearing should still be on the arbor and one inside the housing. To remove the bearing from the arbor, you will need to support the bearing in such a way that you can use a rubber dead blow hammer to gently tap the arbor out of it. For the bearing still in the housing, you will need a brass drift to tap the bearing out from the opposite side of the bracket. Now you're ready to install the new bearings. With the housing well supported, seat the new bearing in the left side of the housing with a wooden block or a socket the diameter of the outer bearing race. Then reinstall the bearing cap. There are various ways of seating the second bearing, but we found this one to be reliable. First, drill a hole slightly larger than the diameter of the arbor in a block of wood. Then mount the block in a vise. Next, position the bearing so that it's centered over the hole in the block, and then slide the arbor into the bearing and seat it by tapping it gently but firmly with the rubber dead blow hammer. Take your time here and ensure that the bearing is fully seated. Now it's time to reassemble everything. Put the first spacer on the arbor and then the key. Insert the arbor through one side and into the pulley. Now insert the second spacer and push the arbor through the outer bearing. Temporarily remove the bearing cap, then install and tighten the lock nut. Then reinstall the bearing cap. Now reinstall the pulley set screws. Use a dab of thread locker on the second set of screws before you put them back in place. With an assistant supporting the weight of the motor, slide the bearing housing back onto the shaft and tighten the cap screw that holds it in place. 
and reinstall the blade shroud. Before you reinstall the V-belts, make sure that they're not cracked or worn. If they're still in good condition, slide them back on the pulleys and then tension the V-belts. To wrap it up, reinstall the table and the blade. If there were any shims, be sure to place them exactly where they were. Align the blade with the miter slots per your owner's manual and perform a test run to check for any unusual noises or vibrations. If everything checks out, you're done. Now, let's make some sawdust.